Hi again then guys and welcome to another installment of the Beards and Cars podcast and this is another guest episode as you'll have seen from the title. Last week of course we had Mav on, there was a great response to that so I'm glad you guys did enjoy it and a lot of the future episodes with collabs and featuring people was pretty much hinging on whether or not you did enjoy that, especially with a very controversial subject as well. So this week we got something totally different, it's a countdown very subjective, of course, as favorite lists already are. And we have another returning face, and you'll have seen him recently on the channel in his Patreon collab debut, reviewing the Gran Turismo 1 Honda NSX race car, and that is, of course, Ness. Greetings from my bedroom. I am indeed Ness in pajamas, aka the only Beards and Cards member without a beard. <laughs> it's not a prerequisite, <laughs> especially uh -oh. when we talk about bikes as well. <laughs> so that yeah. doesn't technically fall under it either. And as far as this topic goes, we are, as I said, doing a countdown list. This is a retro list, though, at the suggestion of Ness. And it's our personal 10 favorite cars, not combined. We don't know what each other's going to say. We have a few guesses, but not as far as the actual list goes. And we're going to go back and forth between what our personal top 10 favorite cars were from Gran Turismo 2 in particular. And this is the kind of series that we'll probably revisit in the future, maybe for a different game, maybe even for a different franchise, because it's very open. You can certainly do that, even with different members of the community as well. So I don't know if you want to start, Ness, or I could. I don't really mind either way. Okay, so um, for my first uh, pick, this is uh, the, one of the things that makes Gran Turismo 2 the way it is. Um, because one of the things that we Gran Turismo 2 fans talk about a lot is the fact that there's a lot of normal cars, like cars that you see pretty much every day, those sports kind of stuff, like your Peugeot 106s. I can't remember if that's in the game or not, but when it comes to those kinds of stuff, I think the one that stands out to me the most is actually a car that uh, I've been in for a while, and that's the Dodge Intrepid, actually. I really love the Dodge Intrepid. Um, it's actually sold a, as a Chrysler here in Canada, but my granny and gramps used to have one, and it was actually a six-seater, if you believe it. Also, it's just a pretty nice car to drive. Like, It's just one of those normal cars that stands out to me the most. I considered putting the Intrepid on my list as well. I ultimately cut it out because a lot of these cars come from like nostalgia for me from when I played it when I was much younger. And the Intrepid was always a car that I love the look of, but I didn't end up using it all that much, much, much even. <laughs> and with the drag tune, like you said, it has the look and it's kind of like the Ford Taurus as well, where you can turn it into a NASCAR, but the performance and the power doesn't really match up to the look with the race modify, which is kind of a shame. Yeah, as I said, it's mostly due to my real world uh, stuff with it. Like my granny Gramps used to drive me forward to breakfast at, in that every Sunday when we first moved over here to Cambridge, Ontario. That has since moved on, but yeah, I still love the Intrepid. As far as my first one on the list, again, like I said, it's not going to be in any particular order. And this one had to be on here for the reason that I just mentioned about nostalgia. And that is the Phaeton from Chrysler, which certainly isn't to everyone's liking. The looks will definitely divide opinion, even the color, which is kind of weird with the two-tone. But it's one of the few cars in the game that I think actually looks better with the PS1 physics than it does in real life. Because in real life, it ain't a good looking car. But in the game, it kind of has a more of a limo meets the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen kind of car look to it, which I loved as a kid. I, I remember wanting to unlock it. I wanted my dad to unlock it at the time because he was a much better driver in the game. And then when we finally did, it was like, eh, okay, <laughs> it's not that great a car. It's powerful, but it's not that quick. It's hopeless through corners, but it will always have a special place for me because the look is still cool. It just has that reminiscent thing of unlocking a car from back in the day that we do not have anymore. And of course, I've talked about that before in Gran Turismo, where you just you don't have to unlock cars anymore. You can pay to win. And I miss that kind of thing. Yeah, the Phaeton, like, I'll be honest, it I... I'm kind of middle of that card for the same reason why you were initially disappointed with that. It's just a pretty slow car once you finally start driving it. It's a very, like you said, I, I, I haven't actually seen the car in real life. So after we're done this podcast, I'll probably take a look at it to see what you mean. But it, it does look pretty good in Grand Turismo 2, ironically. 
Yeah, it's it looks a lot sharper in the game. It's the back end in particular kind of comes to a point. The front end looks very much like that League of Gentlemen car where it looks kind of like a rolling cathedral. But in real life, it kind of just looks like a a bloated two-tone version of the 300C, which is a shame because in the game, it looks so much better than that. All right, so the next car I want to talk about is actually a car that you init- that you revealed quite a while ago. And it's actually a car that has recently been brought back to Forza Motorsport 7. And that's the Nissan R30 Skyline Silhouette. It's honestly one of the best handling cars in the game. And spoiler alert, most of the cars that's going to be on here are race cars because I generally prefer driving race cars in Gran Turismo 2 compared to road cars. Not to say that the road cars aren't awful to drive. Like, they are still very special because they're, again, like, that's the whole point of this list. It's that they haven't been brought back. But with the very oversteery physics, it's kind of hinders the joint for me it's uh, hopefully it's not going to be an issue now considering that i found the analog method to be much more enjoyable than the pressing the x button method but with the r30 silhouette skyline silhouette i think it's just a badass car it just i always love the way that it looks like a it kind of looks like a dragster and a race car at the same time like it has huge arrow kits and I just think it's, yeah, it's just a very badass car. And like you mentioned in that review, it just handles like nothing else. And yeah, definitely, I, also, I, I, I love the look of that as well, yeah. So, yeah, that's going to be in my next pick. That one didn't quite make the list. I'd forgotten, to be honest, that that was even in the game. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I do like it. I think the... The looks are probably my favorite thing about that car. In terms of the performance, like you said, it's fantastic through corners. One of the best cars in the game, easily. Straight line power, not so much, but all of those silhouette style machines always look amazing. They kind of look like those, um, those. I think it's Bozazoku, Bozazoku or something like that, uh, street racing scene where they have crazy body kits and exhausts that are like seven feet long sticking up in the air, except it's all functional with the silhouette race car. It's not just for show. It actually is a really fast, really competitive, almost like throwback to those hardcore IMSA cars of even earlier on back in the day, the Audi 90 Quattro with the wide body kit and all that kind of crazy stuff. As far as the next one on my list, I am actually staying like you did in the motorsport world. This one might be on your your list. It might not. The Vauxhall or Opel Tigra ice race car, Mm. which technically is called the Trophée Andros race car. And it occupies a very similar place to the Ford Falcon V8 supercar, because just like that car, it's the only motorsport car of its type that's ever been in the series. And I, I always loved the look of the Tigra. I've never liked the Tigra in its normal form, ironically. But as that ice race car, it's, I would argue, possibly the best Vauxhall or Opel of the whole Gran Turismo series because you had the all-wheel drive of the Calibra. It had like, I think, 450 or 500 horsepower or something like that. It weighed well under a ton, so it was like prototype level weight. And it was it was mad because technically it was an ice race car, but it felt and performed more like a Pikes Peak machine. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think I had driven that car too much. I just... I found the livery of that car way too similar to the DTM cars with the yellow and the white uh, style. And <laughs> it's just, it just never really caught to my championship. But the fact is, it is the only Trophy Andros, if, if you pronounce it that way. Yeah. <laughs> the, the only type of that car in the game. Uh, it does stand out to me. So yeah, it's a, a very unique little car. Yeah. Yep, so the next car on my list is one of two cars, actually, that's originally featured featured in the first Gran Turismo game. And this is one that has grown on me over time, mostly due to looks, but also because of the performance just blew my expectations on the way. And that's the Mazda RX-7 LM edition, or the RX-7 race car. Not the A-spec version, which you get in the dealership. The RX-7 race car, which you can win in one of the career events. I always thought that looks like basically what would happen if an RX-7 turned into a rocket ship. It just, it looks like no other RX-7. Because it, it's actually, the visual style, it's actually, from the last I checked, based on the 15th anniversary RX-7, which I don't think I've heard many people talk about. But... 
uh, that's one of the reasons it just looks so cool, but also it's also handles extremely well. Easily one of my favorite RX-7s in the game, alongside the A-Spec normal race car, which kind of looks like what the uh, one of the other main characters from Initial D drives. But yeah, I I it's just another one of those cars that I just I just think is very fun to drive. I've not driven the RX-7 in any of its racing forms in GT2 in a similar way to well, I have driven them obviously, but not to the same level that you have. For me, that's a similar occasion to what you had with the Tigra, where it's a car that I've seen. Might have used it once or twice, but never really fully got into it. Definitely not as much as something like the Skyline Silhouette car. I always like the look of the FD RX-7 race cars. And to be honest, I do miss that kind of style of RX-7 because later on we had predominantly the RE Amimaya Super GT cars, which are cool up to a certain level, but they never had that full-on like GT1 kind of style like those did back then. Even the one like, I think it was the A-Spec that was in the dealership, it was like either pink or green or something, or blue or green, and it had more of the road car look, but just with a smoother body kit, loads of stickers all over it, and the wing, and like 590 horsepower or whatever it was, and it just had a clean look to it, kind of like when Bugatti went to Le Mans with the EB110, and it essentially looked like the road car, it just had a load of stickers over it, and I think that's a cool approach, which obviously now with Le Mans, you don't really see that kind of stuff anymore, because we have no homologation or road-based vehicles really going there, they're completely overhauled compared to what they used to be, but yeah, for me, I just never used those RX-7s that much, but I can definitely see why you would have liked them uh, as much as you do. Uh, as far yeah, as my I next one on the list... Sorry. No, go on. <laughs> uh, the, the ironic thing is you can buy the RX-7 LM in Gran Turismo 1, but you have to win it in Gran Turismo 2. And for the RX-7 A-Spec Edition, it's the exact opposite. <laughs> there are a lot more variants as well of the RX-7 race car in that game than I think we've ever had since. My next one is one which you mentioned before we started recording, I think. A car which has to be on my list because I love the road car. I actually love this rally version far more, far earlier than I even realized the road version was anywhere near as badass. And that is, of course, the Daihatsu Syrian or Storia rally car, which 400 horsepower, all wheel drive, similar price tag to some of the race cars, I think, like a million credits or something like that. And it always got overshadowed by the Escudo and the Cultus because, of course, it did. But at the same time, in a similar way to the Vauxhall Tigra, it had this super compact, more like 400 to 450 horsepower level, which I would say is perfect for the car. And I never knew how good the Storia Cross 4 was back then. I'd never heard of that car, never used that road version. I just thought that the road versions were boring and the rally car was awesome. And then over the years, I realized, oh, actually, the rally car technically isn't real. It's just a variation of one of the one liter actual rally cars, which has no way near that kind of power. In a similar way to the Beetle, actually, that's in that game, the Beetle GT that didn't technically exist with all-wheel drive and 450 horsepower. Uh, got nothing to say there. I Again, I never <laughs> driven this car. All I can say is that I the Daihatsu Story Cross Store is also my favorite Daihatsu. So, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's all that needs to be said. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, I know I'm I'm kind of on an island when it comes to my Daihatsu love. <laughs> yeah, my next pick is also a car that you mentioned, and it's one of those cars that kind of made return in Grand Turismo Sport, but at the same time, not really. And that's the Mini One Two Seven Five S, the the basically the Monte Carlo Mini. It for its power, you can do lots of stuff with it like you can take it to like one 235 horsepower events or i don't run the number win and it could just demolish the competition it really kicks above its weight because it's very it has extremely n nimble handling it's great for tight circuits like grindwald autumn ring uh it's just it's just a hoot to drive because it's it is very slow but at the same time, what it can do with that power is just, it just really speaks to me. I absolutely love that Mini as well. It was very hard for me actually to leave that off of my top 10 or even honorable Aww. mentions, but <laughs> I, I do love that car. Um, I love the fact that we kind of got it back, like you said, in sport, or at least you can make a livery homage to it. It's got basically everything except the little Monte Carlo um, 
plaque on the roof or whatever it was that it had back then but it was an awesome car i think it was pretty expensive for a mini but it was worth it because it could like you said just destroy everything through corners the average speed was so good and pretty much any front wheel drive car in gran turismo 2 was so much easier to control than like a you know lotus elite gt1 or something like that or a jaguar xjr15 or those crazy handling cars but yeah yeah I, I do love that car as well it was one of the most difficult ones to leave off of my top 10. this one i think might be the first actual crossover on the list. I'd be surprised if it isn't. The Lister Storm. <laughs> because the Lister Storm is easily my favorite supercar of Gran Turismo 2. The race car is very cool. Of course, you could turn it into the race car. And in the later games, we had the race car only, which was cool, but it was always too heavy. It never really punched as it should. It was always like missing the punching bag completely because of the specs that they gave it. But the road car in a weird kind of way and actually in a similar way to how the beetle rsi is kind of better than the beetle cup car for a number of reasons the list of storm road car to me always felt far more usable than the race car did huge power i love the look of the list of storm it's such a unique looking car and in some ways i believe i said this in my review of it as well it's kind of what the xj220 should have been with an actual seven liter v12 jag engine and fantastic performance for a number of years, I believe over a decade, it was the fastest four-seater car until Brabus came along. But yeah, I don't know about your thoughts on it, but that one for me, if I was ordering the list, would probably be like top three. Uh, I'll be honest with you. That car would probably be in like the 15 to 11 region. Um, I'm sorry, but... Ooh, I interesting. <laughs> I, I, love the, I love the Lister Storm as well. I always... It is a very awesome looking car. It's just... It's not my favorite supercar of Gran Turismo 2 because it's it's just one of those things where I just prefer the other 10 or maybe other 12 cars or whatever. Yeah, that's fair enough. It, it, again, with the visuals, as is my style, it, it's so unique looking, so boxy. It's kind of a Marmite car. Some people will love it. Some people not so much. But yeah, I, I definitely fall on the side of loving it. And I think it also tends to be one of the cars that you see the community asking for a lot as well in terms of it returning the race car as well but the road car especially all right now i'm not gonna i'm gonna hold my bets and that i don't think anyone down in the comments would expect me to talk about this next car because it's pretty it may be my favorite car that nisbo has produced the nisbo stagia hmm. it is the yellow stagia that you can win at one of the events it for a while it used to be my favorite estate or wagon car but honestly it just it just looks so cool to me it it has very lazy performance that you could get in a muscle car but in a it just has the power the uh almost like the estate version of the nissan skyline it just feels great to drive it just it's a very hard car to describe why i love this so much because it, the Stagia itself, I do like. It's not my favorite of the wagon style cars, but I just prefer the Nismo. I just, I think the main reason why I love the Nismo Stagia is that they just decided to tune it up, anyways. Like it's just one of those cars that they didn't really need to make because it's just a, it's a station wagon. Like you don't really need to make a Nismo version of that car, and yet they did. But the fact that they still made this car just it really warms my heart that they did. So I that's going to be on my list. I should also mention right now that this is just a wrap trip. It may change over time, but yeah. It's an interesting choice. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of the Stager. I, I looked through a list of the cars that were in GT2, and the Stager is a car that I've always liked because, like you said, it, it's a totally unnecessary car to have an aftermarket tuner version of because it's already a speciality car, and then they're making a speciality of a speciality but the concept of a Skyline wagon is just inherently cool. It's such a big car, but it's still surprisingly light on its feet, even though it is pretty heavy. The tunability, of course, is there because it's Skyline-based. It is the GTR of wagons, and literally. <laughs> the Evo wagon's cool. The Impreza's a little bit overdone because they've had so many of them in the franchise. But yeah, I do like the Stager, and I like the fact that surprisingly, because they did leave a lot of those speciality cars behind, four-door skylines for instance they did actually keep the stager in gran turismo for quite a while after that even the ortec version as well which i think was cool because a lot of those like i said were unfortunately just left behind for various reasons 
that was your next pick, whatever number that yep. was. Uh, the next one for me might be on your list, maybe in its racing form. For me, the road car always gets more of my love, but I do love the race car as well, and that is the Lotus Elise GT1. For handling, not the best thing around, certainly more tricky than most. I'd put it up there with the XJR15, uh, maybe the GT90 as well, but not quite as bad as that. But I've always loved the Elise GT1. I didn't know there was a race modifier initially because when I was a kid, I couldn't afford to buy it in the dealership. And the fact that the Esprit GT1 was there as well was very cool, but it was always overshadowed by the Elise because the Esprit, it pretty much just looks like what it is. It's an Esprit with a chin splitter, a big wing and more power. That's cool. But the Elise was just such a stunning looking car, such a reworking of this car, which had no way near the proportions that it ends up with. They made it so much wider and longer, kind of like an R390, but the British equivalent of it. Of course, the power was way off what it actually is in real life. It's far faster in the game than it actually should be. But I love the look of it. It's the reason why I've got a model of it on my shelf. I love the Elise. One of the very few games from many, many years to even feature it. And now, of course, it's come back in, I think, Forza 7 and Horizon 4 both have it, if I recall correctly, and probably a couple of others too. Project Gotham had it back in the day, but it was one of those cars that, in a similar way to some Morgans or like Zenvos and stuff like that, when it does pop up, it's not necessarily going to be the best thing in the game, but it always makes the fans very happy to see it return. I don't really remember much of uh, driving the Lotus Elise GT1, but honestly, it may have been a while, but I feel like the first few times that I drive it, I didn't like it. I just didn't like the handling that much. <laughs> yeah, the handling is definitely the hurdle to overcome because it's so different to the normal Elise. I mean, like I said, with the stretched wheelbase and everything's wider and taller and heavier in a funny kind of way. But yeah, it's definitely not for everyone, that's for sure. <laughs> so what's the next one on yours? Okay, so this is like my first, second, third, fourth. Six cars, so we're finally down halfway. This one may end up on your list. The Honda S2000 GT1. I said before on the channel, like in one of your Beards and Cars podcasts, that I always wanted a hardtop S2000, but, and I was just pissed that they never made one in real life. But the S2000, it's GT1. The S2000 GT1 is... I think one of the best looking cars in Gran Turismo 2, to be, if I'm going to be honest with you, I love the Honda S2000 and I'm really, I love the fact that the race car is almost as fast as the other GT style race cars, like the GTSR, uh, the, the Vectorm 12 LM, the Venturi 4000 GT, all those GT style race cars. It, just the fact that there's a Honda S2000 that's as fast as those cars. Yeah, the the S2000 GT1 was a very similar car to me, and you're going to hate hearing this, <laughs> but it was similar to the Mini again, because you could easily make it like a top 20 or even a top 30 favorites list, but I had to cut some out. The S2000 GT1 for me is not even close compared to the Amuse. The Amuse was always cool, but that hard top that you're talking about from GT2 to me was so much cooler. It looks like not an aftermarket car like the Amuse is. It very much looks like Honda would have actually made that thing to race. It looks the part. I consider it to be easily one of the best looking fictional polyphony race cars that they've ever done because it looks so right on the car. It's not just, eh, let's put a body kit on it. No, it's got the hard top. I think it's got a roof scoop, if I recall correctly. Not too much power, but just enough. Very lightweight fantastic track car and i actually like it for similar reasons to the lotus actually it's predominantly the look that makes me love the elise gt1 likewise with the honda as well so i definitely feel you on that one i love it it was hard to leave it off the list but i had to ultimately because again i didn't use it a huge amount back then it was mostly visual for me but as far as my next one goes, this one I think might be on your list as well. And as far as my list goes, there are a couple of cars that will be on most people's lists, I think, for cars that we all love from Gran Turismo 2. And that is the road version of the Toyota GT1, which was fantastic from a road car point of view, basically untouchable. <laughs> so quick, top speed wise, it was like 250 miles an hour, I think, maybe even more. But the look to me as well, it was subtly different to the race car. It had four exhausts instead of two. It didn't have the livery, obviously. It was just red. And I think I've gone on record on the channel before saying that I think the TS20 road car 
despite being in so few games, which is a crime, is one of the best looking Japanese cars ever made, as far as I'm concerned. So I don't know what your thoughts are. Sounds like you might have some, though. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. The only, only reason why I haven't put the Toyota GT1 Island list is because in the North American version of Gran Turismo 3, that GT1 road car is in that game. So for me, personally, it doesn't count. But if it was if it was a GT2 exclusive car, it would most definitely be on my list. I'm gonna, I'm. <laughs> it really pains me to not talk about that car, but yeah, it really, it really is a fantastic car, which is fun to me because when I was little, I was just more of that rivalry straight between the GT1 and the 787B because I was always more of a 787B kind of guy. But the and it, it's similar to the Corvette versus Vipers rivalry it's just one of those things where you have to have a sort of judge to like the car that you're rivaling against but over time it just kind of i started to appreciate those cars more and yeah the i always love the the gt1 road car is easily my favorite of the gt1 style like the ts220 cars and it's definitely one of those cars that i really wish pd would Revolution Digital would bring back for to please the Toyota fans after they've given us a bunch of Toyotas that nobody really asked for, like the S800, the Levin. But <laughs> yeah, I still, I I really love the GT1. It's just a technicality version kind of type of thing. But yeah, th yeah. Th that's fair enough. <laughs> that's fair enough. Um, I didn't even think of that, to be honest, because yeah, I never experienced that car in Gran Turismo 3. I think the Lamborghini Diablo GT1 was also in Gran Turismo 3, but I never experienced that either. Um, Neither did yeah, I, because it was only in the Japanese version, and it had yeah. so bad graphics in Gran Turismo 6. The next car is actually the second car that was also from Gran Turismo 1. And it's funny to me because the normal version of this car i don't really consider myself a fan of because i don't really care much for the look of it but the race car both in Gran Turismo one and two i'm surprised they made it the way they did it the honda del sol lm edition a car that i actually referenced in my hsd collab for the nsx review that car as i said it just had it, in Gran Turismo one it was one of the, my favorite handling cars in the game. It just felt so fast and so brutal through corners. I love the fact that they made a front wheel drive coupe car uh, turn it into a mid engine rear wheel drive car. It's one of the very few cars in Gran Turismo to do it that. And in a sort of funny kind of way, that mentality ca carried on to the Peugeot RCZ Group 3 car in Gran Turismo Sport. And as a result, it used to be one of my favorite race cars in that game for a while. But nowadays, I'm more lukewarm to it. I'm just more so a fan of the concept of that car rather than the performance. But it's just a car that I always loved and respect for what it can do. I'm definitely on the same page as far as engine location swaps. There's something just inherently cool about that, especially when it comes to cars which kind of look like they should have always been mid-engine in the first place, <laughs> like that one does. I must be honest, though, and I know this is sacrilegious to say, I've never driven the Del Sol race car at all in Gran Turismo in one or two. I don't know how I've never driven it. I just never got around to it, I guess. Oh, because but, you yeah. need to get gold one of the license tests to do so. <laughs> yeah, things have got a lot easier in the licenses in recent years compared to what they were before. And they suffer okay, because of so, it, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, definitely. You need something to work toward. Otherwise, what's the point of the license? It's not making you a better driver if you can do it easily. Um, as far as my next one on the list, it is another car which I talk about a lot on the channel. And it's the only Gran Turismo game to feature this particular version of the car. It has been featured since Gran Turismo 2. I don't think it was in the first game, but it might have been. But definitely Gran Turismo 2, all the way up until Gran Turismo 6. It's a byword for power, the TVR Speed 12. But in particular, the original Speed 12, also called the 7-12 back then. But in particular, I'm going to go really specific and say with the race modify. When it's white and blue, like the car that Clarkson drove on Top Gear, it just looks so cool to me to have that version of the race car, which I can't remember if that one actually ever raced 
or if it was just a racing concept. I know they raced the later one, the 2000 shape, which was more bulbous. And I love that one as well. But there's just something about the original, which is just so cool to me. I love the white and blue paint. It manages to be pretty iconic, actually, those colors. There's not many cars that have that. For sheer power, of course, like I said, it's a byword for power. One of the most notoriously Larry cars to drive in Gran Turismo 2. Unlock only, if I recall correctly, just like the Tuscan was crazy fast but unlike a lot of the cars like the lotus elise or the jag the xjr15 that kind of stuff i always felt that the tvr was actually worth putting the effort into because some like the lotus it was kind of you could do it if you want to but you, there's certainly other cars that you could win with instead but with the tvr it just felt more special to me i don't know if you're gonna hate me for saying this but I, the tvr speed 12 in grand Turismo 2 is just the card that I constantly sell every time I drive, I win it because you could sell it for <laughs> 500,000 credits and it's just a easily one of the best money earning making methods in the Grand Turismo series because most of the cars in that game, uh, the most expensive cars is 2 million credits. So you can win that four times in a row and you can get your, I don't know, your uh, Toyota GT1, I guess, because. <laughs> I don't want to spoil what your <laughs> everyone knows what it is, but but yeah, when it cut, but I did try to drive it at the TVR Speed Twelve, and again, it's just I feel like it's one of those cars where I feel like if I tune it better, because I have getting better at tuning my cars, I would like it a lot more. Because for me, the highlight for the Speed Twelve when it comes to driving it is that sound. It's it just sounds so brutal and it sounds so ferocious. Moving up to the final three cars, uh, this next one is also one which you mentioned you reviewed. I don't really, I don't expect your card, that card to be end up on your list, but I always, when you mentioned that uh, you had a lot of trouble driving this car when you first played it, the Jaguar XJR15. It's just a much cooler version of the XJ220. I always love that more super, the more gt1 style styling that that car has to me this is just one of the cars that's when it comes to the unicorns of unicorn supercars of grand Turismo 2 it's just i feel like it's this is probably gonna sound weird but i feel like it's more forgotten than the other two v cars let's say uh, the the xr15 i first of all definitely liked a lot more than the xj220 that's for sure i've never been a huge xj220 fan as far as the xj220 goes just as a side point the only one that i do like is the twr version which of course we've never had in gran turismo anyway but the xjr15 kind of always reminded me as well even though i didn't know it at the time so i, I guess it was later on that it reminded me of a combination of the ascaria cosse which we reviewed in Unsung Heroes way, way back. And also kind of like the Mosler MT900 to some degree as well, where it's just that pure focus track going shape, which unlike the XJ220 had no thought to the road whatsoever, just a pure race car. The look is very pretty, I think, which is something that the XJ220 just doesn't have. The 220 is very big and wide and muscular, but the, the XJR15 almost has more of like a, almost a Pagani approach where it's much more petite and curvier and looks lighter even than it actually is. Doesn't have anywhere near the power of the XJ220, if I recall correctly, but doesn't really need it either because it's just a really good car. Now, as far as my next one on the list goes, I believe we've referenced this one either in the video so far or maybe before starting recording. But of course, the American supercar that I would love to see back, the Vector. The Vector M12 in particular. The Wiga always gets all the attention. The W8, for obvious reasons, it's kind of nuts. Looks kind of like a modern-day Stratos. But this one, to me, is just such a pretty car. A far nicer version of the Lamborghini Diablo, as far as I'm concerned. Kind of like a Diablo front end and a Ferrari F50 back end. Again, kind of referenced in Unsung Heroes with the SRV8. I think it's called that yellow one that came later on. But this one in the game, smooth handling superb base model for that gorgeous race car which incidentally was actually real as well raced against panos in some events which is an incredible pairing but yeah the the m12 i always loved it even as a kid knew nothing about the backstory but the fact that i later found out that even jeremy clarkson considered it 
considered it <laughs> considered it to be a great handling car even though american supercars don't tend to be thought of for that that just made me love it even more i'm gonna tell you right now this is the i'm pretty sure this is gonna be the only crossover car on the list because this is indeed the next car on my list and funnily enough it is actually on my looking at my notes it is immediately after the jaguar xgr 15 because the vector m12 it's easily my favorite supercar of the 90s i just think it's so i just think it looks so cool it the fact that it's one of the america's very first and supercars that nobody really talks about i just it does look so clean and yeah basically for these same reasons that you mentioned because it look it handles very well it just it it's a much cooler version of the diablo it's just a uh, very I just love the Vector M12. It's definitely in my top 10 favorites as well. So moving on to your second pick, the last pick, I mean. Um, so my number two on the list is a car which on the channel, I've put the brand more so up against Vector rather than the specific model. It's not the model that most people would choose as their favorite from it because it's the base model. And I go back and forth all the time on which one I prefer. There's a race car, there's a supercar, and there's a sports car. And that is, of course, Venturi. The 300 Atlantic, though, for me, is the car that I've always loved, even back then. The 400 GT has a really special place for me, being so much cooler than the Ferrari F40 could ever hope to be. And I know that's sacrilegious to say, but just for me, at least. The race car is very cool, but not as cool as the Vector. But the 300 Atlantic, I think the reason why I love it so much is because it falls into a category of car which, generally speaking, I don't have a huge amount of favorites in, and that is Super Sports, because its rivals are stuff like the Lotus Esprit, I guess, in the game. That's probably its main one. Maybe the Viper in a general sense, because 300, 350 horsepower. But for me, the 300 is such a clean, classy-looking little car. Kind of understated, but the fact that it's a French exotic is just cool to me as well. Saw one for sale years and years ago now for like 20 grand here in the UK. It's just so much cooler to me than like a Lotus or a, a Ferrari 355 or whatever. But yeah, for me, I know a lot of people love Venturi, but the 300 in particular for me is probably my favorite in the game. Or my favorite uh, Venturi, I should say. <laughs> funny that you mentioned that because Venturi is just, uh, it's definitely a lovable manufacturer for me. I... Definitely do like a lot of their cars. I def I like all their cars in uh, Grand Turismo too, but uh, they're I wouldn't exactly put them in the upper echelons of cars that I myself would want to drive all the time. But definitely do like their cars. So moving on to my final car, and I definitely saved my favorite for last. And I'm gonna I'm also gonna say this right now. You mentioned that you never drove the Honda Del Sol LM edition. I highly doubt that you've done the same with this car because it's <laughs> one of those cars that's easy to forget. It's honestly easily one of my favorite versions of one of my favorite cars in, in, of, in real life in Grand Turismo 2. And it's easily my favorite of the cars that has not been featured in future games. It's not my favorite in Grand Turismo 2. That would be the super obvious pick, which i may or may not mention in the comments but as far as <laughs> other cars go when i was a kid uh, back to to adult still playing it today the dodge stp tyson viper gt the super gt version of the viper you can say i absolutely love driving that car it as i said the viper i mentioned before like on the channel in both the comment sections and some of the the discord uh basically everywhere on the social media that the viper gts is my favorite car and there have been many versions of the viper that i love driving in grand Turismo. and in grand Turismo 2 in particular the stp tyson viper it's just an odd i just it to me the livery is easily one of my favorites of all the vipers i i honestly like it more than both team orica livery vipers but the STP Tyson, it's just, to me, it just has the speed of the other two Viper race cars, which is the Team Orca and the White uh, GTSR, but it handles so much better because it's a Super GT car, which, if if for anyone who hasn't played it, is one of the best handling race, are some of the best handling race cars in Grand Turismo 2. And 
With the Viper, it doesn't have as much power as the other Super GT cars, at least once you bought them. Like most of them has like 690, 680 horsepower, but and this one has like 640 something. But I love driving the Viper. It's yeah, I mean, yes, it's not successful in the Super GT races because I don't I don't really know what it was, but it's definitely no uh pel pen Pennzoil or Calsonic or Castrol style GT cars. But again, I just I'm just glad that it's one of the very few non-Japanese Super GT cars in the game, alongside the Nomad Diablo that we mentioned earlier. And honestly, one of my one of my low-key hopes for a car to come in the future Gran Turismo tire, it the Gran Turismo series is the Lark McLaren F1 with the pink one that's uh also was successful in Super GT. That uh if the packs weren't so dumbed down, but it was the same as 2018 packs where they, there was always some sort of theme for some of them. I would have loved if one of those packs had the Lamborghini Nomad Diablo, the Lark F1 GTR, and the STP Tizen Viper because I feel like we could always do for some more Super GT cars, but in Grand Turismo 2 in particular, I love that car. It's easily one of my favorite cars in GT2. That's an interesting choice, and I will say I definitely didn't expect it. <laughs> I knew you loved the Viper, but I think that was a car that, again, I probably haven't driven that variant of, I don't think, because if I recall, I know I love the Orica, because everyone loves the Orica, but I don't think I ever drove the STP version, if I recall. I think there might have been like a green Viper race car as well, if I recall correctly, or something like that. might be thinking of Forza, though, I don't know. But yeah, the, the Viper is a fantastic base car to work with for pretty much any form of racing. And I think people don't give it credit enough for that because it's very easily what could have been like a Hot Wheels hot rod for the street. But it consistently proved over and over again in Le Mans, in Super GT, in you know whatever form of racing it ended up with, even the ACR as a road car breaking lap records for a while at Laguna Seca, etc., it's much more than a hot rod. It may have this comically oversized engine, but it gets the job done, especially in Super GT, where you'd think going to Japan on their own turf, it wouldn't stand a chance. But to still be a car that actually can is, is very impressive for what the Viper can do. You know, as far as my number one, I expected you to say it as your number one, but I guess you didn't want to steal it from me. <laughs> of course, everyone already knows what my number one's going to be. My favorite car, not just of Gran Turismo 2, but probably of the entire Gran Turismo franchise, and it probably will remain such unless the Ferrari FF <laughs> ends up being in the game. And that is, of course, the Nissan Micra Super Turbo. No, oh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> obviously not. It's the Renault Spass F1, because what else could it be? The three and a half liter, 800 horsepower V10, crazy performance. One of those cars which I would very much so say back to six or seven year old me would form my love of those types of car that I ended up ultimately making a whole YouTube series out of called Unsung Heroes. I think it all goes back to this era of gaming for me. And the Aspas is such a groundbreaking car in GT2 because it was a car which just looks so ridiculous that it's on the track with all of these other cars. It's this big golden box, which is somehow beating everything else on the grid. It's a car which has no business being anywhere near as fast as it is. And yet it's it's this brutal performance car. It's this iconic car from Gran Turismo. It's the kind of car that if it were ever brought back, of course, it would pretty much please me more than any other vehicle coming back to Gran Turismo. And it's one of those cars which, in a similar way to stuff like the GT1, of course, it's a fan favorite. It's a car which so many people remember so fondly, but for good reason. It's not like the Phaeton where it's just about the looks or something like that. It's, it's a car that's got the look, the sound. It's completely oddball. I think the only thing in the game which is even close to it in terms of being that weird is probably the escudo and apart from that nothing else really ticks all the boxes like the espace does but i know that you like the espace as well i don't think we've fully discussed your level of love for it but yeah that's that's definitely my number one pick uh yeah i i left it off my list pretty much for the same reasons why you mentioned like i didn't want to steal your thunder <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it would also be on my 10 list it's just uh it's one of those cars which i I honestly look at it like even to this day, I'm still shocked that I still can't believe that exists in real life because it's a minivan. Well, technically not because it doesn't 
have the practicality one, but it's a minivan styled card that that can easily beat most of the cars in the game, like the GT ones, the Toyota GT ones, the uh, R three nineties, the GTSR Vipers, but those kind of stuff. But it's just so cool that Gran Turismo added it in the first place, and it's just one of those cars that I really wish. It's also one of those cars which I really wish uh, PD would bring back for for the very least in Gran Turismo Seven. But I love the SBS F one. It's it is also one of my favorites. Just didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. So interesting where we crossed over. Some of your picks I didn't expect. Some of mine you didn't <laughs> from what you said. And some crossover as well, especially stuff like the Vector and the Espas. Those cars that pretty much everyone tends to love if they've at least played GT2 for any kind of length of time. But yeah, ultimately that's it for our top 10 favorites. You could get into you know honorable mentions all day long because there are so many great cars in GT2. But ultimately that's it for our picks. If you have played GT2, of course, slap your top 10 down in the comments. You could do a couple of honorables, but Try to keep it modest. You can end up with like 20 honorable mentions or something. But overall, that's it for our list. I'd like to thank Ness for joining me on the podcast as a guest. As I said with Maverick, we are going to have more guests in the future talking about a wide variety of things, not necessarily just patrons, but initially probably patrons for the most part. So yeah, thank you to Ness once again, and I'll see you guys next time. But for now, as always, thanks for watching. And fluffy pillows. <laughs>